Hello and welcome to The Rabbit Atheist. I'm Ed Raby, a former pastor turned atheist, now compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like, because the purpose of this channel is educational in regards to atheist and deconversion issues, and any issues related to those issues. A hearty shout out to the Rabbit Nation. Join the nation by hitting that subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel in a more tangible way, hit the join button. And your membership options that lead to citizenship in the Rabbit Nation will be presented to you. Today I'm continuing on in my Thursday discussion, which is a running discussion on various questions about God, the existence of God, uh, the arguments for and against God. Um, Thursday is kind of just the day that we talk about atheism as compared to everything else. Uh, I had a recent comment recently about why do you even ask these questions if it's something that you don't believe in. As a former person who was a theologian with a master's degree in theology, I used to ask all these questions all the time. And I think basically I'm now asking them just to show you how absurd the whole idea of God is. That, well, because we create theology, really God is our creation and he's not revealing himself to us. We keep going around in circles about his attributes, and that's because he's a man-made creation. Different human beings had different opinions about God, and we keep going around and around about those opinions. But today's question, I think, hits a lot of issues when it relates to theology and how nonsensical it is, and that is, is God unchanging? Now, this is the idea of the doctrine of immutability, which appears in a lot of religions that have a monotheistic God, that God is immutable, that he never changes, that everything is about him is the same. And it's a really comforting thought. Uh, we human beings like things that are stable. Okay? It gives us a feeling of security and so on and so forth. And so I think the whole idea of God being a secure place for a lot of people is bound up in the immutability of God or the unchanging nature of God. But the problem with God being unchanging is that omniscience and omnipotence really have trouble here. Either God cannot act any other, in any other way except according to his nature of being omnipotent, that every single molecule in the universe is moving at his direction, and therefore things are happening the way he wants them, and there's really no other way that he can get around them. We've already talked about God's free will. I don't think God with these qualities of being the omni-god, can have any free will. He's either bound by his power or his knowledge or his presence or his benevolence to do what he's supposed to do. He cannot act against his nature, and he can't act against what he knows. And so I don't think God having libertarian free will is true. But that also creates other problems for the idea of God being unchanging. This is the only way that you can keep God unchanging is completely strip him of his free will. Okay, he cannot do anything other than what his nature and his knowledge tell him he has to do. Okay, and so everything is set, everything is in this final stage of this is the way it is because this is the way God wants it. Now, there's of course ways I suppose to get around this. When I was an open theist, I basically chucked the more traditional definitions of the omnis and replace them with my own. For instance, with omniscience, I said God knows everything that is knowable in the way that it is knowable at the time. This, of course, puts God inside of time, that he's as much a part and product of time, that time simply exists because God exists. Okay, it was one of the arguments that I used to do. Okay, you know, God has always existed, so time has always existed as part of his nature. His timelessness becomes an existence for time, which is really kind of a nonsensical statement, too. But we'll run with it for the purposes of argument. And then, of course, I had to reframe omnipotence, that God has all the power that actually exists. Okay, so things like creating a rock that he can't lift, that's a power that just doesn't exist. Okay, so that kind of diminishes what we conceive of God's power and conceive of what God's knowledge is. You can get past in open theism the fact that you're diminishing our understanding of certain things in order to make God fit. But what really is illustrated in the context of the universe is the universe seems to be in constant flux and change. And wouldn't that be a better reflection of a God 
that is, he is changeable, that he can learn, that he can go forward. This is where polytheism has a lot of benefits because we have, a God, we have gods that deal with order and chaos and the constant change between the two, which makes a more sensible notion than this omni-god who's kind of forced by his power and by his knowledge to act in certain ways and he can't get past it. The thing that is really constant in the universe, maybe the only unchangeable thing in the universe, is change. Things are constantly moving, changing, going from energy to matter and matter to energy. Things are moving around, back and forth, all over the place, okay? There's a constant movement to the universe, okay? And this indicates a change maybe is not a negative, it's just the way it is. And so the idea of immutability and unimmutability kind of come back to this idea of comfort. We, as human beings, realize that change often doesn't really bring anything good. So we create a doctrine that basically says God doesn't change because that comforts us. Oh, we can finally run to something that doesn't change at all, that doesn't you know, do, any, do anything that will harm us or anything like that because everything works out for good for those who love God. And the problem with this, of course, is the revelatory God, if you follow the God of the Bible, has a lot of problems. He is a very changeable God. Yahweh changes his mind a lot. He goes from being passive to being angry. Well, that change of attitude doesn't mean anything if God is immutable. In fact, it kind of indicates that the God of the Bible isn't immutable. Okay? He, you know, he does all kinds of things okay, that indicate you know, a change. He repents of certain actions. You know, he has sorrow over what he has done. You know, it's, I'm sorry that I created man in the first place, is a big part of the story of Noah. No matter how you translate that word, it means that God has a regret. And regret indicates a change of mind from being very pleased in the beginning of the story, he saw that everything was good, to, mm, I'm kind of regretting that I create these human beings. That indicates a change of mind, a change of direction, a change of an intention. God changes his intention in, in the Bible, too. You know, he, he literally gets convinced by several people not to take certain actions. You know, it doesn't, the story of Moses, you know, getting in front of God and saying, hey, man, you don't want to kill all these people, that wouldn't be good for you doesn't make any sense unless God can legitimately be persuaded. Well, if he can be persuaded, he can be changed. And this is the problem with the doctrine of immutability and theology of immutability for God in general. Is being unchanging actually a positive quality? And that becomes a very different argument in theology. Because sometimes it's good to see that the situation has changed and just change your mind or change your attitude or change your action. Now, sure, I'm making God more like human beings, but almost every description I've ever heard about God seems to be somewhat like human beings. And so we always try to inject our humanness into this supposed being that is beyond humanity. Okay, Even in the Christian God, you'll have a change. We've moved from the redemption through the law of Moses to the grace of Jesus Christ. Even Paul talks about this change and how God had changed things. And even gives a warning to the Gentiles, you know, if God didn't spare the natural branch, don't think he'll spare you, you know, if you go off the rails. That's an idle thread if it's all immutable and it doesn't matter. The real problem with the God of the Bible is you can't maintain immutability. You can try, you can play a lot of semantic games, you can go around and around in circles, but it doesn't really help you with that particular God. Ultimately, I think... What this all demonstrates is that God, shall we say, the concept behind God becomes more and more clearly man-made, human-made. We do a lot of things that we create. We create an omnipotent God because we want a God that has all power to solve our circumstantial issues. We want somebody that has all knowledge so that we have a future that God knows and can, can plan for. We want God to be benevolent, because we want somebody to love us no matter what, no matter how awful our actions may be at times. We want somebody that also is always present. He's always there when we need him. And because we want and desire these things, this is the God that we create in our minds. And the problem is, when we create such a God, he has logical inconsistencies with reality. And that's because 
maybe, just maybe, this omni-god doesn't exist. In fact, I would say with some pretty supreme confidence that the omni-god as created up to this point just doesn't exist. You have to get rid of something. The nonsensical nature of theology kind of demands it. We're at a stuck point here where God cannot be all of these things. We have to compromise something. We have to get rid of something. And the whole non immutable, the whole idea of God being immutable in all this is just ridiculous because somewhere along the line, God moves from not using his power to using his power. That's a change. God you know some things absolutely, some things propositionally. That's change. is going to indicate some change. God is present everywhere. God is benevolent, which means he sees something you know, harmful and he makes a change to change it to something beneficial. These are all indicators of God not just being changeable himself. But the very revelatory gods, all that are proposed, seem to be indicating that they're coming into the world to change it. Okay, well, why do that if it's all part of your plan in the first place? See, this is the nonsensical nature of theology and why, as a atheist, I still practice it a little bit. Because the more I practice it, the more I, I, I deal in theology, so to speak, the more I realize how nonsensical and how difficult this is to maintain. I remember when I was writing my blog, All Things Rabbit, I had a little serial series called The Theology Pub along the side. And I began to liken theology to alcohol. And that's because, yeah, if you really want it to make sense, you often have to be a little bit drunk. <laughs> theology always went better down with alcohol because then your mind can like see something through a clouded glass and not see it clearly, and then you get some sort of good answer. But the fact is, theology is a nonsensical idea because you're basically trying to make sense of man-made ideas about God. And the problem with human beings is we all have different ideas of what God is. Every single person I can talk to has a different variant on who God is. They all can't be right, but sure as shooting, all of them could be wrong. And that's what I think I'm going to maintain. As we shift in these questions, we're going to talk less about God and probably talk more about belief and faith and whether or not those are ridiculous ideas when it comes to believing in God. Let's switch from God's side to our side and see what happens. Well, anyway, I'm always interested in what you have to say in your comments. Um, I'm sure some of you theists will try to defend this idea, and I'll just remind you at that point that this is another human interaction, but okay. And, uh, you know, just uh, some of you that uh, I noticed that a lot of times with these videos, many of you, I'm on, yep, this is what killed it for me. Yep, this is what killed the whole idea for God for me. And I think some of you theists need to take note because it's the study of theology that doesn't lead to greater faith in God. It actually leads to more and more atheists, much like the study of the Bible. So there you have it. I'm always interested in your comments. Um, it's always a good mental exercise from time to time to just deal with this stuff. Mostly it keeps sharp all the logical fallacy understandings I have. Appreciate that. But anyway, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate every like, share, and subscribe. You guys are awesome. I also want to give a shout out to all my citizens and all my rabid citizens. You guys are what makes this channel work in a lot of ways. Um, it makes me worry less about the, the only God I can prove it exists is algorithmo, the algorithm of YouTube. And so, you know, you guys help me to kind of, eh, you know, not have to worry about algorithmo so much, and it's your help that does that. Thank you very much to my members. You guys are awesome. And, uh, you know, as always, uh, live your best life. Don't waste your time on money and opportunities, on the trappings of religion and faith, but instead give them to the people that you love and care for, making this a better world, and to building up yourself. You'll be happier if you do. And as always, thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you next time.